Some retail stores throughout California are set to reopen tomorrow, but only under certain conditions. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Barbara Lee Edwards. I'm Carlo Cicchetto. California Governor Gavin Newsom explained today what the phase two guidelines are for reopening. News 8's Shannon Handy reports. Governor Newsom says we will move into phase two gradually. So starting tomorrow, low risk retailers like bookstores and toy stores can reopen with curbside pickup or delivery only. But restaurants are going to have to wait before allowing people to dine in. It's a health first frame. In an effort to get the economy moving, California Governor Gavin Newsom and his team outlined the businesses allowed to reopen Friday and under what conditions. The guidelines we're focused on today are extending opportunities in the retail sector, the manufacturing sector, and the logistics sector. The governor said retailers like Toy Book and Sporting Goods stores can reopen with delivery and curbside pickup. Employees must wear masks and gloves and install hands-free payment devices if possible. Meanwhile, manufacturing Manufacturers and warehouses must also follow certain hygiene guidelines and establish outdoor break areas. Later on in phase two, dining restaurants, shopping malls and outdoor museums can open, though no specific date was announced. We're moving away now from essential and non-essential to lower risk. The governor maintained nothing is set in stone, meaning some counties can move further into phase two if they meet certain criteria. We need to make sure that each county has the ability to understand their data and pull back from some of these modifications, slow down in some cases. Also Thursday, the governor spoke extensively about California's budget shortfall, a staggering $54 billion. While he appreciates the federal government's help up until this point, he says more assistance will no doubt be needed for some time. We have to recognize that this moment requires an historic effort a partnership. You may have seen some of those businesses mentioned already open. Governor Newsom says they likely jump the gun, but starting tomorrow they can open legally. If you'd like to see the guidelines needed to reopen, we've put them on our website. Go to cbsa.com, click on the help button, and coming up new for you at 6:30. Governor Newsom held a roundtable today with restaurant owners. We'll have that at 6:30. Back to you. There is one big step local businesses need to take before they can reopen tomorrow. Certain types of retail stores, along with some warehouses and manufacturing and logistics associated with those businesses are eligible to reopen. But first, they must complete the county's safe reopening plan, which can be found on the county's website. That plan must be posted at the entrances of the businesses that are reopening. The state does have provisions for businesses to reopen if certain metrics are met, but no large urban communities in California qualify. The county today is reporting 110 newly confirmed cases of COVID-19. That brings the total to 4,429. The 110 cases represent just 3% of the more than 3,300 tests performed, but the county points out that those tests also include batches from previous days. Seven additional deaths were reported, bringing that total in the county to 165. One positive impact of the current situation, it turns out there aren't as many people drinking and driving. New numbers from the San Diego County District Attorney's Office show a big drop in the number of DUI cases. News 8's Kelly Hassadal has more on those numbers and what the District Attorney's Office had to say about them. Well, the number of DUI cases in San Diego County has dropped by about 50% compared to this same time last year. Now, obviously, the stay-at-home order is a big reason for this, but the DA's office says the numbers are still concerning. The problem comes where people don't really know how much they're consuming. Deputy and District Attorney Callie lot Bright lot handles DUI homicide cases in San Diego. In 2020, the number of cases submitted for March and April were 529. Last year, they were 1,074, and in 2018, they were 1,208. Tell me your reaction when you saw the numbers from March and April this year compared to last year. Of course, the numbers are going to be down. That's, you know, people are supposed to be staying home, but I was surprised that the numbers weren't even lower. Just last weekend, a 26-year-old woman behind the wheel of a Kia Optima was arrested for DUI after crashing into a Lincoln Town car on the 15 near Interstate 8, killing the driver and severely injuring her passenger. Once you've had that first drink of whatever alcohol, 
your judgment becomes impaired. Do you have any sense of where some of these DUIs are happening? Is it a prevalence of people being at home, running back to the liquor store, going back home again and they're driving drunk? Or what are we seeing? It's, it's a couple of things. There are a, a few of them that I've seen are people that are, you know, obviously they're still working or they meet up and have a bridge, you know, after work, or they're meeting up at, a, you know, a friend's house and thinking they can have one or two, but one or two is never one or two. It's, you know, four. You know, when you think of, oh, I can have two beers, that's two domestic beers, you know, with have a much lower alcohol level than craft beers. And so that's a part of what we see. Wine, people don't realize that one standard drink for a glass of wine is four to five ounces. And with fewer cars on the road, drivers who are breaking the law stick out like a sore thumb. The CHP says before the pandemic, DUI arrests typically happened at night or in the early morning hours. Now they're happening during the day as well. Bright's advice. If you need to have a cocktail party to meet with your friends, use Zoom. As for statewide numbers, the CHP says DUI arrests have dropped from 7,200 at this time last year to about 4,200 this year. Back to you. The latest health data from the county shows Latinos account for more than 56% of the region's COVID-19 cases. News 8's Alicia Summers looks at how the Chicano Federation is helping tackle this issue. San Diego County numbers show that the South Bay is being disproportionately affected by the coronavirus crisis, and there may be a few reasons why. The Chicano Federation is rooted in advocacy. That is really how this organization started in advocating for our community. The Chicano Federation in San Diego is addressing the alarming statistics released by the County of San Diego that shows Latinos account for more than 56% of the total coronavirus cases locally. The CEO says this data is not surprising. A lot of that stems to, you know, to the structural inequities that have been in place for a very long time, including that Latinos are more likely to have underlying health conditions such as heart disease, obesity, asthma, the nonprofit also attributes the higher number of COVID-19 cases in the Latino community to greater housing density and more reliance on public housing. So when you have a disproportionate representation of Latino, uh, of the Latino community as, as part of the frontline essential workers that are low wage, uh, you mix that with lack of access to affordable housing, which means multiple families living together, increasing the risk, to, the risk of exposure, and then a failed safety net in the county of San Diego uh, this is what you're going to get. A doctor at Family Health Centers of San Diego is seeing the higher rates of infection among South Bay residents as well. He says it may be a language barrier and a socioeconomic issue. If you have a job where you're not able to telecommute and you still got to be in on the clock to, uh, to do your job, then you're at much higher risk of becoming infected. The Chicano Federation is stepping up its programming and advocacy to get the message out and meet the emerging needs of families during this time. So systematic failures in our community. It's the under uh, funding of our safety net and our health and human services that have led to this crisis. The Chicano Federation adds there is no evidence showing that border crossings have contributed to the increased rates of COVID-19 in the South Bay. The foundation says if you would like to help out its efforts in the community, monetary donations are always greatly needed.